Okay, if you were unsure how to do this on Sketchpad, you can watch here and see how it goes. Um, so open a window from Sketchpad. You still can't see my bar at the top, so you'll have to look at your own bar at the top of your computer screen. I can't drag this up so you can see it. So the first thing, number one, it says open GSP on your laptop, go to graph. So you can't see me going to graph, but I go to graph. And then it says go to grid form and then go over to square grid. So here we have then our graph on a square grid. It says choose the segment tool, tool from the column on the left hand side of the screen. So that's this one right here. We're going to choose a segment. Right? So we go over, we are going to make a horizontal segment in the first quadrant. So here, just make a horizontal segment. Press the escape button twice, or you can do this, right? So you want to unhighlight. So the escape button twice on your computer, or you can highlight the arrow and then click the screen so that unhighlights so there's nothing highlighted. It says highlight an endpoint on a segment by clicking it. So there, if I highlight the endpoint, then I go up and I go to measure and I go to coordinates. And it should tell you the measure of the coordinates right away. Sorry, so here it is. So here's my measure of my coordinates. And then I'm going to do the second one. So measure coordinates. So here's letter B. Here are the coordinates for this one. Now if you can, try to snap it to the grid so it's exactly specific answers. It might be a little bit easier if you want to try to discover the midpoint formula. But if you can't drag it, so what I mean is this is 2.08. Can I make it exactly 2? So 2.01 and 3.99, so that's pretty close. Looks like that's the closest I can get. Um, and 9.03 and 3.99. Okay, so let's see. It says, number four, highlight an endpoint. Yeah, we did that. The coordinates of the point should appear in the upper left-hand side of your screen, so I drag them down here so I can see the coordinates right here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, so now... I am at step number five. Repeat the step right there at that point. Okay, did that. State our endpoint. So you're going to fill out the lines for number six, right? So line number six, you're going to put, fill out your endpoints, whatever yours happen to be. They may not be the same as mine. And then we're going to highlight this segment. And we're going to go up to construct the midpoint. So here's my midpoint, and then guess what I'm going to do with the midpoint? I'm going to measure or find the coordinates of the midpoint. So here you go. My coordinates of my midpoint are 5.56 and 3.99. So what do you notice here? Why is this 5.56? Why is this 3.99? So think about that. We're going to repeat this process. We're going to go here to the construction tool, except this time we're going to do a vertical. So I'm going to choose point, do a vertical line. So there we have it. Looks a little off. So how off is it? Well, I don't know. We're going to measure those endpoints. So you can see here, I've measured the endpoint. So here's E, here's D. So here we have 13.05. This is 13.09. So can I get it closer to 13? So it's completely vertical. OK, so at least they're vertical one now, because this x coordinate is the same. So I know one's directly above the other, except their y coordinates are different. This one's really close to 2. This one's really close to 9. So again, if we highlight this and we construct the midpoint, and then this point is highlighted, so we're going to construct, or we're going to, sorry, identify what the midpoint is. So here the midpoint is 12.98. We'll notice these x-coordinates all stay the same, except what happens to my y-coordinates. So look, I just happen to choose very similar x-coordinates for my vertical, or my horizontal, as I did for my vertical y-coordinates.
very similar here. Close to 2, oh, close to 9, close to 2, close to 9. So then my midpoint, what happens? What is the relationship? Well, if it's a horizontal line, my y stays the same, but how does 2 and 9 relate to 5.5? And then here on a vertical line, my x coordinates stay the same, but how does 2 and 9 relate to 5.5, roughly? So what are we doing there? So right below this, it says, now construct a diagonal line segment. So let's construct a diagonal line segment. So go back, choose this point. There we go. So construct a diagonal line point, repeat all the steps to find the endpoints, and then the midpoint. So I need to go here, and I need to measure the coordinates of G, put them over here, and then I'm going to do the same thing for what will be called H, and put them here. And I'm going to highlight the line, construct the midpoint, and then I'm going to measure those coordinates, and I see here. So what do you notice? Well, this time I went from roughly 6 to 9. 6 to 9. Why do I have 7.5 right here? And here I went from 2.43 to 8.96, so why do I have a 5.7? So 2.43... Maybe go closer to... Oh, there we go. We got exactly 3, 6 on the bottom one. So up here, can I get exactly 9, 9? There we go, 9, 9. So this is 3, 6, and this is 9, 9. Then how do 3 and 9 relate to this number 6? How do 6 and 9 relate to this number 7.5? So what do we do to the 3 to the 9 to get 6? What do we do to the 6 and the 9 to get 7.5? And that is what you're going to fill in right here. So now I'm down here. So what is my midpoint formula? What was the relationship? How was the midpoint calculated? Can you come up with a formula? So we had 3 and 9, we got an answer of 6. Well, if we took 3 plus 6, or sorry, 3 plus 9 and divided it by 2, we would get 12 divided by 2, which is 6, right? And so that was the average. The average of the x-coordinates will give you the midpoint for the x-coordinate. The x-coordinates, the midpoint, the x-coordinates midpoint. The midpoint's x-coordinate. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's the midpoint's x-coordinate. So the average, so what do you do? You take the x-coordinate of one point and the x-coordinate of the other point, and you divide it by two. That's what average is. You take the two of them, therefore you divide by two. That is the x-coordinate of the midpoint. The y-coordinate of the midpoint is taking the average of the y-coordinates of the endpoints. So these are the endpoints, remember. So x1, y1 is an endpoint. x2, y2 is an endpoint. These are the endpoints of the original segment. How do you get the midpoint? You take the average of the x-coordinates, and then you take the average of the y-coordinates. Whew! Okay, hopefully you didn't need to watch all of that, but you could look at this formula here at the end. Hopefully you were able to discover that with your GSP. Okay, so how do we find the midpoint of negative 11, 3, 8, negative 7? So we're going to take the average of the x-coordinates. Well, that's negative 11 plus 8 divided by 2. So that's negative 3 halves. So my x-coordinate of my midpoint is negative 3 halves. My y-coordinate is the average of the y. So that's 3 plus negative 7 divided by 2. Notice I'm keeping this sign. What does that mean for average? That means we just add them together and divide by 2. If it's negative, it stays negative. If it's positive, it stays positive. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So the midpoint joining these two segments would be negative 1 and a half and negative 2. So if you're not sure, graph it. See if it looks right. So over here, if I did a quick one, negative 11, positive 3. So that's my first point. 8, negative 7, that's my second point, roughly. So negative 1 and a half, negative 2. Does that look like the midpoint? Sure. Right? So I'm just doing a rough sketch. You could do more specific, but that's just a rough sketch. Okay, how about number 2? What if I gave you the midpoint? 
and I gave you one endpoint, and you're trying to find the other endpoint. Okay, so let's look at that specifically. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. This is point M, right? To the right, three, up, five. And then here, point J is zero, one. So J is here. So where does K have to be? Where does K have to be? Well, K has to be what? Does it have to be over here somewhere? Or does it have to be up in this blue up here? Well, if M is the midpoint, then the halfway, it's halfway between the two endpoints. So K has to be up here in this space. So how do we find that? Well, we're going to take 0 plus the X coordinate of K and divide it by 2. Right, so we do not know the coordinate of k. So we could say k is equal to x comma y. So we take 0, add it to x, divide by 2, and that's going to give us what? Well, that's going to give us the x coordinate of the midpoint, which is 3 in this case. Now we have an algebra problem. How do we get rid of this 2? I multiply each side by 2. The 2's cancel. So I end up with 0 plus x equals 6. Well, 0 plus x, there's no reason to keep the zero there, so x just equals 6. So the x-coordinate of k is 6. What's the y-coordinate? So we do the same thing, except our y-coordinate this time is 1. So 1 plus the y-coordinate divided by 2 will give you the y-coordinate of the midpoint. So an endpoint plus an unknown endpoint divided by 2 gives me the y-coordinate of the midpoint. So again, my first step multiply each side by 2 because I got to get those 2's to cancel so I don't have a fraction. So I get 1 plus y equals 10. Therefore, what does y equal? y equals 9. So the end point, you go to the right 6 up 9, and that is your answer for that end point. Okay, to continue, I have some practice back here. Go ahead and pause and then check your answers in a few minutes. So go ahead and pause and try these on the back and then check your answers when you're done. Okay, so here's a review of the midpoint formula, right? You take the average of the x's divided by 2, average of the y's divided by 2. Here's an example in case you need another example to see. This is the midpoint here, which means this segment is congruent to this segment, right? Or they're equal in length. And so here, if you calculated, these are the answers you should have gotten. You should have gotten 3, right? 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 2 is 3, 16 divided by 2 is 8. Number 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. Number 3, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, 8 plus negative 8 divided by 2 is 0. And here, 3 plus negative 5, that's negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, 4 plus 4 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. Number five, you should have gotten a two and a point five. Number six was the interesting one. You had to add a plus a plus two. Well, that's two a plus two, and then divide that by two. Well, two a plus two, we can divide each of these by two to get a plus one, right? Or just say to yourself, what's in between a and a plus two? It has to be a plus one. So my x coordinate of the midpoint is a plus one, and then six plus 10 divided by two is eight. Here, um, we haven't really done length and slope. We'll do that later. So you only had to find the midpoint. Sorry about that. I should have clarified or marked it out on this page. So the midpoint for the first one was 1, 1 half, or 0.5. Number 8 was 5, 1. And number 9 was negative 3.5, negative 4. On the bottom, it was those trickier ones where I give you a midpoint and an endpoint, and you have to find the other endpoint. So here's a practice problem in case you were unsure of the front of the notes page. So what do you do? You take the endpoint plus the other endpoint, which is unknown, right? So B was unknown. So endpoint plus endpoint divided by 2 will give us the midpoint. So I multiply by 2, I get 8. Subtract 3, I get a 5 here. So you should have set it up, 2 plus y divided by 2 is 3, then gotten a 4. Number 11, the other end point B was 4, 0. And number 12, the other end point B was negative 4, 4. Here are the setups. If you have questions, ask me in class. Bye.